We're recording this update just a few hours before the 2018 legislative session ends. So what do you see as some of the highlights of this session? Well, you know, there's definitely been some highlights and some, some things that have, uh, have, have brought, me, brought me down a little bit. But the highlights are the fact that, you know, just today we passed the House supplemental budget. And while I voted no on that budget, um, the highlights are that our economy is strong. Well, um, and we're expecting some, some really record revenues coming back into the state, which really kind of led to my no vote on the supplemental budget. We can talk a little bit about that later. But I'm happy that, of the fact that, that our revenue increases are up. That means that our economy is going strong, that uh, housing values are going up. And in the end, I think that this legislative session is going to end on an uptick. But it was the first time I've ever not supported one of our supplemental budgets. And we could talk a little bit about that later. So any other highlights that you think out of this session? Yeah, in the end, there's, there's no major tax increases in this, in this budget. There were some really devastating proposals early on in the session that just recently died. There's no capital gains income tax in this budget. There's no carbon. There's no low carbon fuel standards in this budget that would have really increased the cost to every household in this state. And that's something that we're always aiming to take care of, are the people out there in our communities who are just trying to make a living and pay the bills. So I really see that as an upside of this budget. When it comes down to other things that, that are in the budget, my top priority this year coming down was to get uh, some money for the Snohomish County Diversion Center. And I was really happy to see that money in the budget. We got $800,000 for this pilot project that's going to help create a diversion center and create plans for these folks into the future who are suffering from uh, addiction and mental health, give them some short stay housing while they plan for their future to get long-term treatment for their mental illness or addiction. So I'm really very happy that that is in the final budget. What about disappointments this session? So the, the disappointments uh, kind of come from the fact that even with this huge increase in the state revenues that over the next biennium are going to equal about $1.3 billion, I had made a, an amendment request to the state supplemental budget for $30 million to go out to our school resource officers uh, that would provide school resource officers to high schools, middle schools, elementary schools that don't already have them. I think that this is a good priority-based proposal because what is higher in priority than protecting our schools, protecting our students, and making sure that they can learn while they're at school? And there's so many good upsides to the use of school resource officers, so I am indeed disappointed by that. There is some property tax relief in this budget, but the downside to this property tax relief is that it doesn't come for another year and a half. And on a $300,000 home, we're only looking about at about a $90 tax savings in this proposal. And I believe, it's my understanding, that over the that when it comes down to the increased assessments um, and uh, prices of homes, values of homes, that most of that will just be eaten up. So there's no real tax relief. And I, um, I know that my colleagues across the aisle are, are really promoting this as being a great thing, and tax increases really are always a good thing. But in this particular case, I think that we need immediate tax relief, not something a year and a half down the road that really doesn't move the ball forward. You were a key negotiator on an agreement that provided compromise legislation to Initiative 940, the deadly force initiative. So could you explain your role and what that new legislation would do? Initiative 940 is an initiative being put forward by Deescalate Washington. The initiative in the end, uh, lowered the standard, the charging standard, for officers who are forced to use deadly use of force in the line of duty. And it would make, just make, them, make it easier to prosecute officers and put officers in jail. I was really opposed to that, especially as a career law enforcement officer myself. But in the end, myself and Representative Goodman from the 45th Legislative District were able to bring all stakeholders together get us all in the same room together and hammer out a good, productive, community-based uh, agreement uh, to move this state forward and avoid that, that harmful initiative process. So the resulting legislation there is House Bill 3003. It would indeed put a new charging standard in place, but um, for my law enforcement officers out there, what I want you to take, uh, take faith in is the fact that if you stay within our training under the Graham v. Connor National Standard, which we're all trained to, um, this new statute will protect you. In the end, there is uh, some other good agreements within this regarding the, uh, the giving of first aid after a situation like that and training within our, within our criminal justice training center. 
in the end, House Bill 3003 will bring the communities together and, like I mentioned before, avoid that really harmful initiative process. Well, now that the legislature is adjourned, should citizens remain involved and how can they? Sure. So uh, just day after tomorrow, Saturday the 10th, uh, myself and Representative Smith and Senator Bailey are going to be participating in, uh, in town hall meetings in three of our communities throughout the, throughout the 10th Legislative District. We're going to start the morning in Freeland, then move up to Oak Harbor, and then the last one of the day is going to be over in Conway to hit that uh, uh, Camano Island, Stanwood, and Mount Vernon areas. So uh, I invite everybody to come out and join us and ask us good questions. Otherwise, I uh, work for you year-round, and um, myself and my assistant, uh, Kendra, are, all, are in the office and ready to take your emails and phone calls. So please check out my website, uh, representativedavehayes.com, and you can look at the times and dates and locations for those town halls.